Hello, let's build an application that uses generative AI. In fact, let's build that application using generative AI and do the whole thing without writing any code whatsoever. Sounds like a tall order, but in this video I'm going to show you Amazon Party Rock, which is a hands-on environment that you can use completely for free to experiment with generative AI, build your own generative AI-powered applications, and learn really important skills like prompt engineering along the way. Let's jump in to Amazon Party Rock. And this is what it looks like. So to get started, it couldn't be simpler. All you need to do is describe the application that you'd like to build. So let's click on build your own application and we can type in whatever we want. And I'm going to enter into here, what is my pet's superhero name? That is the application that I wanna build, an application that can help me with just this. So let's go ahead and click create app. And what's happening now is that Party Rock is taking this text, which is a prompt, and it's deciding how it can build an application for us that can help us to choose our pet's superhero name. And once it's built that, it'll show us all of the widgets that it's made in order to make that happen. And we can then go ahead and modify that application if we want to. And you can also build your own application from scratch as well. Okay, now I'm zoomed in quite far here just so that you can see it in this video, but this is called My Pets Superhero Name Generator. And what we can see here is the application that's been created for us. So first of all, there's some instructions. Um, so this app will help you come up with a superhero name for your pet based on their personality and your favorite superheroes. Interesting. Um, so then we have some inputs. So we have pet name, and we have pet description. And so these are text inputs where we can actually add in some text. So let's go ahead and do that. So my pet's name is uh, Sparky. That's his normal name uh, by day. They are called Sparky. Um, and then we have pet description. A poodle dog, more or less is a poodle. It's kind of got some other things going on there as well. Um, now let's scroll down. Uh, favorite superheroes, let's say The Flash and Spider-Man, that'll do. Um, so let's scroll down and you can see what's happened here. We've got this superhero name widget and it's generating an output for us. Now it already had some generated output as we scroll down because it's been constantly updating itself with the information that we typed in just above. And so it's generating this output for us. And this is the output of our application. So it's actually come up with a whole list of different names that we might be able to use. So here are some creative superhero names for Sparky the Poodle who loves The Flash and Spider-Man. I didn't realize that it was Sparky that liked The Flash and Spider-Man, but hey, nevertheless, it's come up with some answers. So Speedy Poodle, Web, Web Doodle, The Canine Crusader, hilarious stuff going on there. Okay, so how did all of this happen? Well, you saw before we typed in that description of the application that we wanted, and we then um, had these text input boxes. So if I click on this little icon here at the corner of this box, it says edit, and I can see the proper Properties to do with this particular text input. So we have a name, and in this case it's pet name, and then we have a placeholder text. So enter your pet's name. And so that was what greeted me as I started using the application. That's why I knew what to type in there. And so I can make any edits and changes to this if I wish to, but I, I don't, so I'll click cancel. So that will be how all of these text inputs work. And incidentally, I can resize these and move them around as I wish. So let's do that, especially with these shorter ones. I'm just going to shrink them up to here. Maybe I can put uh, this one, if I just scroll down, shrink that down, and we could put it up there. There we go. So we've got all of our inputs nicely across the top. And then we've got this big text generation one here. So how does this one work? Well, if I click the edit button, which is just underneath me, so let me get rid of myself for a moment, we can see the details to do with this text generation box. So again, we've got a name, so a superhero name. We've got different large language models that we could use, and you can experiment around with different models. So here we're using Claude. And then we've got the prompt. And the prompt has got this special syntax in it where it's actually using the inputs from the beginning of the application. So the prompt says, come up with creative superhero name for pet name. Now, if I hover over that, it'll show you whereabouts that is inside of the application uh, based on their personality description, which is here, and favorite superheroes, which is here. 
Okay, so this is how this prompt is being put together. It's being dynamically created from the inputs, and this is a form of prompt engineering. And we can edit this. So say, for example, we just wanted to have the superhero name, not all of this description as well. Well, let's go and update the prompt to do that. So I could put a full stop here and say, just provide one name and no reason why. So I can click Save on that, and it will now start to generate a new output based on my new updated prompt engineering. And there is the title for my superhero dog, Zoom Doodle. All right, well, what does uh, that look like? What does Zoom Doodle look like? Let's shrink this down a little bit here, and let's add in another widget. So I can put my cursor over here. It says Create Widget. If I click that, I get this dialog here saying, well, what kind of widget would you like to create? And I could create another user input, some more static text or some instructions. But these are the generative widgets that I can select from. So text generation, such as we've just seen over there. Um, also, image generation and chatbot. So let's have a go at image generation. And here we could say a portrait of a person called, but let's change this to a portrait of a pet called pet name. And I can click Save on that. And what it's done there, if I just scroll and I can resize this one as well, um, it's created an image of my pet. So let's go back into these details for a second. A portrait of a pet called Pet Name. So this will create a portrait of a pet called Sparky, which is fine, but I want a superhero image. So let's say a portrait of a superhero pet called now, if I type the at symbol, I now get access to all of the variables, if you like, which are available inside of this application, including the pet name and the pet description, but also the superhero name. In other words, the output from the other generation. So that generation can be used as an input to this generation. So a portrait of a superhero pet called superhero name, and then we'll get rid of this, so we don't want that anymore. And now we can click Save. And so now, when I do that, this should automatically start to regenerate. And you can see that that's happening here because of this animation. And in a moment, we should get an awesome superhero image of Zoom Doodle. There he is. That's amazing. OK, so you can see how we've gone from just that simple text prompt to create an application to get a superhero name for our pet. Um, it has then created that application overview for us. And we've made some adjustments. So we went in and we adjusted the way that the prompt worked to be a bit more specific to just what we wanted. And then we were able to use the outputs from some of the widgets as inputs to the next widget. And if you look in there, the other options you have are things like chatbot. So you could actually create a chatbot to chat with your superhero pet. But I'll leave that as an exercise for you. The last thing that I want to show you just before we finish up this video is up the top here. So at the moment, this application is private. And so it's just for me to experiment around with. But once I've built something that I really want to share with the world, such as my pet superhero name generator, I can click this button at the top, which is Make, Public, and Share. And if I do that, my application is now public. I can copy that link to my clipboard, and I'll paste it in the description below this video. I hope you've enjoyed this explanation about how Amazon Party Rock works, and I cannot wait to see the kinds of things that you make with Amazon Party Rock once you've had a go. And if you're comfortable making your creation public, then share the link to your creation in the comment beneath this video. I can't wait to take a look. Also, do take a look at community.aws forward slash generative AI. That's where you'll be able to catch up on articles and how to's all about generative AI and AWS and so many more things as well. So please do remember to share this video with anybody you think would like it. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and until the next video, I'll see you next time.